My name is Eddie Grenmeyer and I'm a project pedagogical officer at the European School Net and it is my great pleasure to be your host this evening. In those webinars, you will learn from experts in STEM teaching innovation, from professionals who have found ways to teach varied topics using new technologies, and from entrepreneurs who found themselves in STEM innovation without a degree in science. They will share their experience and they will enlighten us about the skills and careers of tomorrow. But before I introduce our speakers for the evening, please let me go over a few housekeeping rules. My colleagues, Rocio and Eleni, are available in the chat to help you with any technical support you may need. So please don't hesitate to reach out to them if you have needs for any assistance. They are also sharing a link to a signatures list for this event. So I would kindly ask that you take a short moment to fill it, as it is an important formality for us to be able to organize future events. In addition, only by filling this form will you be able to get a certificate of attendance for this webinar. And to finish, uh, I will, we will be taking questions for our speakers in writing, and we will try to answer as many of them as possible by the end of each presentation. So please, if you have any question, do ask them in the chat and we will uh, translate them for the speakers later on. Now that the housekeeping rules are done, uh, let me introduce our first speaker. So our first speaker tonight is Roman Corson. He is a co-founder and educational researcher at DARTEF. DARTEF develops special software that allows teachers to easily connect school mathematics to real life situations and helps shape students into future creators and innovators. Aimed for students from 12 to 16 years old, DARTEF software can help students understand how mathematics knowledge is used in the work of STEM professionals. Roman has an engineering background and he's also a recent uh, master's education in innovation graduate from the University of Tarfu in Estonia. Today, he will showcase how math teachers can use DARTEF softwares to connect school mathematics with STEM jobs. Roman, thank you very much for joining us today. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Edin. Thank you very much. And I'm really glad and honored uh, to be with uh, all of you here. I'm really thrilled to um, uh, share uh, what we have done and what we are um, uh, doing. And of course, I will be glad to answer as many, as many questions as um, possible. So just a small uh, uh, interruption for starting sharing the presentation and I hope that here it is. Uh, Eddie, could you please let me know if this is visible? Yes, you're good to go. Okay. All right. Um, once again, uh, thank you very much. I am uh, Roman. I'm a co-founder of uh, DARTEF. And uh, just a few words uh, on um, what DARTEF is about and what we are doing here, why we are relevant. So uh, yes, we are from Estonia. We are uh, educational technology startup founded um, already four years um, ago. And two years we were working purely on educational research. And we were we were working hard on that, but then then we realized that we need to adopt some academic knowledge. And myself, I went to universities studying uh, educational innovation. And uh, so, yeah, myself, I have a dual background in uh, information technology and also in uh, social sciences, which is um, educational innovation. All together, we are four people. Myself, I do have a teaching uh, experience extracurricular. And our software developer is giving extracurricular activities, uh, more precisely robotics classes um, uh, to students uh, as well. So we are not only sitting in our lab, but we sometimes visit schools as well. And uh, whatever we do, we do it just with uh, one single purpose of connecting mathematics to a modern, uh, real world and uh, and and why we do it why this is important 
this is important because future is um, very uncertain. Uh, different forecasts from UNESCO and United Nations and and um, uh, World Economic Forum predicts that that two thirds of um, children who go to school today will have jobs that don't yet exist. And I believe that it was just a few days ago in um, in a, a STEM career cafe where uh, we were speaking that. There is so many professions, uh, STEM professions that were not existing 10 years ago. And this process will be only mm, uh, developing and uh, more professions are to come. And we don't know the professions where our children will mm, uh, will work. And um, on one side, this is good. Technology is developing. On another side, um, the same forecasts are saying that up to 1 billion jobs may disappear due to new technology like artificial intelligence and robotics and um, other. And I believe you know it um, uh, very well, even without me mentioning that. And let's better speak about what can we do about it. And those forecasts who predict that predict that future that I was speaking just before say that in order to stay competitive our children needs to have three must be competences. It's linguistic competence, it's technological competence and it's mathematical competence and it's really a very good um, uh, coincidence that uh, that um, uh, that we are together here with Elias Robot because they will be speaking about uh, linguistic competence, and uh, our um, ourself uh, will go more into details about mathematical and technological competence. Uh, just before I continue, um, Eddie on, or somebody else, could you please confirm that you see uh, me changing slides? So. Uh, Yes, your slides are moving across and okay, we can see good. you as well. Yeah, good, good, good. Yep, so speaking about uh, competences, particularly technological and mathematical competences, what are these competences exactly? Like if we say that our children needs to have, um, the, need to have mathematical competence, what does it mean? And um, in order to uh, give a good illustration, let's for a moment look at one typical mathematics exercise that uh, I'm sure you, if you are a mathematics teacher, uh, uh, has given to your students or uh, when you were in school, I'm, I, I'm sure that you will remind, um, you will recall something very similar. Typical school mathematics exercise. Farmer Albert has three times as many chickens as cows. Altogether, there are 60 legs in the barn. How many cows does farmer Alfred have? This exercise is often present in school like something that is connected to real life. And this is true because we have cows, we have chicken, we have even farmer Albert. This is really real life exercise. This exercise very well demonstrates the power of mathematics. But do we actually count cows and chicken by their legs in our real life? I think we don't. And this is exactly what we do. We bring, mm, we bring another type of exercises to schools to highlight what is mathematical competence. And mathematical competence, uh, we have analyzed a lot of different sources and the best definition that we have found is mathematical competence is ability to apply mathematical knowledge beyond schools, not just for making exam, but for something beyond. But the question remains, what can we do about it? Okay, Roman, you are speaking seven minutes. Please tell us what you, what you can do about it. I invite you to recall one more exercise from the school. Um, it's approximately six or seven 
seventh uh, years of mathematics. Um, perhaps uh, those of you who are not mathematics teacher remember coordinate system, mathematical coordinates, find point uh, with coordinates three and two. This is typical exercise in school and what we do, we try to give really authentic context for this kind of exercise. Do you remember Albert, the farmer? Imagine that Albert is not a farmer anymore, but what if Albert would be an autonomous car engineer? I want you, I want to present you one exercise that is right now being tested um, together with different other exercises in um, Estonian uh, schools. We have a pilot there. I will speak a few words uh, about it. And what we have here on a screen. So this is, um, uh, this is uh, a map of one um, Estonian uh, city. And here is a school. This is a school. And this is a road from school. And we ask uh, children whether they can propose a mathematical method to drive a car. Let's check if this functionality is working. Yeah, to drive this way out of school with an autonomous car. And what we uh, teach children, we will see in a video if this is working well. Uh, so I believe the video is coming. So yeah, first of all, we show children how to see mathematics around them in a everyday situation. So to give um, uh, to give uh, a usual situation a mathematical language, and then what children do, they um, we teach them how to make mathematical model of something. In this case, it's autonomous um, car. Maybe I need to erase what I have. Yeah, what I have um, uh, drawn. And what children then do, they model a movement of autonomous car with the knowledge that they received in a school. And this is uh, seventh uh, year in Estonian school, the topic, and this is what uh, they do. So this is a typical exercise in a school, and we try to keep typical exercises um, as they are, but we give them a mathematical, uh, sorry, an authentic uh, context. This is uh, one example, and let me show you um, uh, one more example. So. What if Albert would be a biotechnology engineer? And uh, before I will show you what Dartev uh, do, uh, does uh, about it, here is a screenshot of one uh, business news, uh, newspaper uh, from, uh, from the UK. And what it says, it says that uh, in the future, a lot of medical operations will be done by uh, robots, by surgical robots. And we wondered if we can bring this context to some typical exercises that children do in uh, mathematics. And right now I will quickly demonstrate how it goes. So um, there is um, a kind of medical uh, operation uh, that requires syringe, this syringe, to make an injection just in the center of a knee. So this is a leg and this is uh, a knee. And how we presented it, um, this exercise in a school, we presented it with the help of trigonometry. So if you are, um, uh, if you are not a mathematics teacher, then perhaps you remember that trigonometry is um, about uh, sinus and uh, cosinus and um, all this kind of um, uh, stuff. And uh, we show students how they can use their knowledge about trigonometry, about trigonometrical functions to model a work of a simple uh, surgical robot. And how, how does it look like? So we first show students where is trigonometry in atomic, um, anatomical uh, 
uh, representation of a human body and what role can it play uh, for making uh, operation. So we see that student is making uh, some activities um, uh, about trigonometry and then he or she is able to check how trigonometry is making for building uh, a model of a surgical robot. And those examples that I showed, uh, it's not uh, all, of course. We have a lot of, um, well, maybe not a lot, but we are developing um, uh, new, but altogether we are um, covering very different mathematical topics in a different context. We connect mathematics, of course, with engineering, with biotechnology, with sports, culture, entertainment, and other different Mm, uh, contexts. And if I would try to sum it up, we try to give authentic context to typical math exercises to show how mathematics is used in a work of real STEM professionals, but we are not trying to invent totally new exercises. I mean that we are keeping our exercises aligned with the traditional curriculum so that when we present it, then uh, mathematics teachers usually see uh, that, um, see what kind of exercises are this. Uh, so it's not really very uh, difficult to explain how those are related with exercises that they do anyway. And, and we call it career micro guidance because using of our software is um, uh, quite simple. Demonstrations can be done, uh, it depends on teacher. I know that some teacher are using it in a class to show it quickly, like in two or three minutes. At the same time, other teachers are giving these exercises as a homework. And we really want to give a small, um, to give a variety of small software pieces that would help mathematics teacher to show how mathematics is, uh, how every topic in mathematics, this is like our ulti ultimate goal, whatever topic in mathematics um, teacher and students have, we want to give a context for that, an example for that. And as I said, we are not only sitting in our lab, actually we have done a first pilot in um, local schools in, Sto in Estonia. It was um, running from March to, uh, to um, April uh, this uh, year. Altogether, there was 166 uh, students from seven schools, and we have observed quite serious increase of student interest and curiosity because they have never seen mathematics uh, like that, at least majority of them. And what was very surprising for us is uh, that uh, Teachers told us that actually their time for lesson preparation even decreased, uh, hopefully because we have very detailed um, worksheets uh, for teacher. And totally unexpected outcome for us was that um, students started debate in a class whether this or that solution is optimal, and they started to propose their own solution, and teachers told us that that they were very positively surprised because they they don't see it very often that students are really debating. And um, just some um, some uh, quotes from uh, teachers and students, uh, what they said after this um, pilot. I especially liked the first one because we are talking about career guidance, and um, some students said that that. I felt myself like a professional, really making experiments. I was I was really seeing something um, something real with my own eyes. And uh, teachers uh, said that um, that uh, that uh, some of them told us that they rethought the way uh, what mathematics uh, is about, and we are really very happy for that. So um, what's next? What's next? And right now, currently, we are running a big pilot. So spring pilot, it was just for one 
uh, grade. It was uh, seventh year, uh, according to Estonian system, with students 14 uh, years old and just one mathematical topic. And now we have a dozen of mathematical topics for um, sixth and seventh and eighth and ninth years uh, or grades. Uh, so students from 13 to 16 years old are currently testing our solution. And um, yeah, it's um, quite local now, but we do have an English version of all the software pieces. Please let us know if you want to try it. Perhaps I, perhaps I need to precise here that our software is uh, free. Uh, our business model is um, in another uh, direction and software is um, free for uh, all, at least English version. And uh, other uh, languages are uh, coming soon. So um, we are adapting our software for German, Spanish and Bulgarian uh, languages in the nearest future. And if you would like to stay aware about what we do, please just reach out. I would be very glad to answer any questions. 18 minutes. Very good. <laughs> Thank you very much, Roman. It's been a very, a very interesting presentation. And I must say that as someone who was terrified of mathematics uh, when I was in school, it would have probably benefited me uh, a lot if my teachers had been uh, looking for new and kind of innovative ways of teaching maths the way you do. Uh, talking about that, we've got a we've got a question online. Um, you've presented some examples of how school math is connected to STEM professions. Can you tell us if those examples are imaginary uh, or if STEM professionals do really make those calculations that you've shown us? This is very relevant question <laughs> because it was our condition that we set up ourselves. Uh, no uh, fake stuff uh, because, I mean, exercise about Farmer Albert is good. We are not saying this is bad, but we don't want to repeat those. And actually, before we start designing new software, we uh, we designed it on a basis on uh, on a basis of what is there. We are not inventing them by themselves. Of course, we may downgrade the complexity because this example that I showed about autonomous car, autonomous car are not really driving using uh, Cartesian coordinate uh, systems, um, at least in a way that I have shown. But we simplified it, keeping principle, keeping mm, principle mathematical model uh, the same uh, as it is. So yeah, short question, uh, uh, short answer to this question is, uh, no, they, these are not imaginary. Those are authentic, but adapted to age and level of uh, students. Great, thank you very much for that. Uh, we've got a question from Anita who has participated in the testing phase and really enjoyed it. And she's got a question for you following the testing phase and their suggestions. Did you make any changes? First of all, hello, Anita. I'm very glad to, to meet you. Uh, well, again, virtually, but it's very nice surprise to have you here. And um, uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, ah, yeah, I see. I see you writing. Hi, hi, Anita. <laughs> um, uh, yes, uh, absolutely. One of the uh, main uh, change, uh, changes that we have made is uh, feedback. Uh, to a student, mm, perhaps even you remember uh, what we discussed in our testing session. We really don't have right and wrong answers in our software. We may have optimal solution and not optimal solution. And this is the reason why in the beginning it was a little bit <coughs> hard for us to give a feedback to student like, um, right answer or wrong answer, but we have found uh, a way 
uh, to give a feedback to student about optimal solution or not optimal solution. So, for example, if we go to, um, uh, again, this example of, uh, of autonomous car or injection, then we are not saying that your um, uh, answer is um, uh, correct, but we are showing student uh, what is the consequence of uh, not optimal solution like this needle of the syringe will go in a different in a wrong place and we give a warning about it or if autonomous car drive off the road we give uh, also this um, uh, feedback to a student uh, as well this was um, uh, one of the main um, thing that came out not only in a testing session but also from the uh, teachers uh, from um, uh, local teachers, I mean, and this was integrated, yes. Great, thank you very much. Uh, and then one final question, because we've got a lot of teachers uh, from different fields who may or may not apply mathematics directly, but um, based on your experience and on your trial phase, uh, so you mentioned trying different types of examples, whether it's engineering, whether it's um, biology, more agriculture. Were there any particular field, any particular type of uh, example that was specifically popular with students? Uh, it uh, really uh, depends on uh, on a grade because on um, in spring we have uh, well actually i uh, i haven't told the whole truth about um, uh, spring pilot uh, we really tested one grade one topic but then one a teacher came back to us and said that I know how to adapt your software to a different topic. Can I test it in um, uh, year 10? So this is high school or upper uh, high, um, uh, high um, uh, school. Um, and uh, when we asked students of year 7 and of year 10, what is the most popular uh, program, uh, then uh, answers uh, were really different. And for seventh year, they uh, liked more uh, cultural uh, context. Uh, actually, it's not a cultural really. It's uh, a software that allows students to control uh, lighting in a theater with the use of mathematical functions. And they liked it most. This is seventh. Uh, great, but 10th grade were really like by far the most popular software or a context, if you want, uh, was about autonomous car. All right. Thank you very much for your answers and thank you again for your presentation. It's been very interesting and I'm sure we'll have plenty of students who will make their way to your website and make use of the software. Now let me introduce our second speaker for the evening. Joanna Heminki is the CEO, and I would dare say CEO, and co-founder of Elias Robot, an award-winning company specialized in robotic solutions for education. Elias Robot is a combination of fun and effective robot assisting learning and a gamified voice app that allows children to practice speaking skills at any time, at any place, without the fear of failure. Joanna's passion is to develop new ways to learn languages and to help people communicate better with the help of robots and artificial intelligence. Today, she'll introduce us to the benefits of Elias Robot and her journey from educator to teacher trainer to becoming a leading specialist in robot-based solution languages learning in Europe. Joanna, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us today. The floor is yours. Thank you for the great introduction, Eddie. It's great to be here. Hi, everyone. Uh, today we will tell you how we ended up to develop a language learning robot called Elias. But uh, I will first share my screen just uh, one moment. Okay. Yes, uh, we are a teacher-founded 
company from Finland and we developed conversational and voice-based solutions for educational use. And uh, here with me is Elias Robot, a language learning solution that makes language learning fun and easy. Elias uh, combines Finnish pedagogy with the latest technology that enables students to learn languages by speaking. We are global partners with RobotLab, SoftBank Robotics and UpTech Robotics, the largest humanoid robot manufacturers and retail retailers in the world. And uh, here is the founder team. At the moment there are uh, six other team, team members, but, but uh, we are the founders. Uh, like Eddie told, I have a background as a teacher. I have been working over 15 years as a Finnish teacher here in Finland, uh, from primary schools to adult institutes, many kind of schools. Also, I have been uh, training teachers in digital skills and, and uh, education technology. So my background is very strongly in education. And uh, here is my co-founder, Carol. Yes, hi. So um, uh, I also have a background in uh, teaching and English linguistics. I did my master's in phonetics and I was studying specifically language acquisition. And then I was an English teacher in France for two years. And then I made a switch to uh, software development, which is how I ended up working with Elias. Thanks, Carol. And uh, how we, how me and Carol ended up from language teachers to the technology field. From my side, um, I had the possibility to explore humanoid robots in my previ previous workplace at city of Helsinki. We were looking for solutions to support adult students' uh, language learning at workplaces. So totally uh, or bit different things we are we are doing at the moment. Uh, many adult students found it very difficult to learn Finnish language, and uh, they had not enough possibilities to practice practice language outside the classroom. And uh, I, I got the crazy idea to try robots as as talking buddies. Nobody believed in that and uh, they thought that I was just playing with the robots when I, I should have worked and, and tested their language skills. Yeah, uh, I did some small experiments with the, with the robot using learning pictures, pictograms and robots object recognition and uh, students loved, loved it. We got very good feedback from them. Uh, I also combined um, uh, what, what we done uh, with some language learning theories and methods. One was community language language learning model. And um, the method where a uh, robot was used as a talking dictionary in the classroom. And the results were good. We noticed that there was a lot of, uh, lot of joy in the classroom. People were laughing more and also it uh, it seemed that uh, it was a bit more easy to ask help from the robot instead of human teacher, because with robot they uh, didn't have to be afraid of making mistakes. That's a short story how the idea of Elias robot was born. However, um, even I understand a bit about technical things and, and robots. I'm not a programmer, I'm not a developer, and uh, I was not able to uh, develop anything further without developer then. And uh, luckily I met Carol. Carol, would you like to tell how you ended up to the technology field? What yes. happened? Yes, um, uh, well, I was uh, teaching English back in France. I, at the same time, I was learning a few different skills on the side, and I sort of got hooked on web development specifically. So I kept working on that. I was doing some online courses and doing some side projects for myself. And shortly after that, I moved to Finland, and I found out that there was this company doing an application of language learning and robots, and they, they were looking for a developer. So it was perfect match and of course I contacted Johanna and that's how I ended up uh, joining the company. So since then I've been working on the application, working a lot on the teacher's interface, developing it, um, creating new features, fixing bugs and doing all the things that developers do. So yeah, that's how I ended up here. Thanks, Carol. Yes, uh, the idea of Elias robot was, was born in the real classroom environment. 
uh, the only way to learn how to speak is to speak. And when I was working as a, as a teacher, I noticed it was uh, quite time consuming and difficult to arrange speaking activities in the classroom and, and make lessons interactive. There are a lot of uh, language learning apps and uh, most of them are for learning words and grammar, but there are not uh, enough apps or not much apps for learning speaking skills. And now uh, during COVID-19 pandemic, it has been even more challenging. Uh, it's, it's difficult to learn communication skills online. Elias Robot helps to learn speaking skills by, ski by speaking. Uh, and with Elias Robot, students don't have to be afraid of making mistakes. Learning is fun and learning results are better. As a teacher, you can't clone yourself, but with Elias Robot, you can clone your expertise and share that expertise with your students and also with other teachers. Let me go back. Uh, Elias Robot has a device independent API and it means that it can be used with several different voice enabled devices. So it's just uh, not just a robot, but, but also you can use, use the application with smartphones, tablets or laptops. Uh, Elias provides uh, personalized language coaching and instant feedback and enables learning anywhere and anytime uh, at school or at home. We are trying to help students and teachers in several ways. Uh, the most important is fun learning, fun and engagement. This uh, robot, physical robot here, it can sing, dance, tell stories, play games, tell some bad jokes also. Uh, also, uh, Elias robot increases language speaking in the classroom. It, uh, it makes uh, language learning more interactive. It makes learning accessible. The robot and, and the software are also suitable for those students who can't yet read or write or who don't have strong digital skills. In the robot, there is just one button. You turn the robot on and then you can speak with it. It is easy to use and it allows practicing uh, anywhere and anytime. Like I already told, Elias uh, reduces the fear of making mistakes and you know that uh, emotions have a very strong impact on learning. If you have too much stress or anxiety that can make learning difficult. Elias can use emotion recognition to recognize some basic facial expressions like uh, if you are happy or if you are bored or sad and it can suggest some relaxing or entertaining exercises according to the student's mood. Also, uh, we want to help teachers by providing them easy and fast way uh, for creating interactive lessons. We have a lesson editor uh, that is easy to use. Teachers can uh, make different kind of exercises, quiz exercises, vocabulary exercises, add some videos or learning pictures and uh, what is most important, dialogues, so you can have a conversation with the robot and without any programming skills. Of course, we have also pre-made content, uh, mostly for English, uh, that is uh, uh, compatible with Cambridge English uh, requirements. There is pre-A1, A1, A2 levels, and uh, also for seven other languages. Finnish, Swedish, French, Spanish, uh, Italian, Chinese, maybe also something else. I don't remember all of them. Also, we want to make it possible for teachers to support, um, guide and monitor their students and uh, make, make pedagogical decisions uh, based on learning data so they can uh, follow their students' progress and, uh, for example, how their pronunciation is, is, uh, is improving and uh, how many words or phrases uh, students have learned and how uh, much time they use for speaking activities. Here is some feedback from one of our teachers. There was a boy in the class who had not said a single word during previous English lessons. Now it is him who wants to be the first to talk to Elias' robot. 
and this is a this is not the only feedback uh, similar feedback we we have received. Elias can help especially shy students uh, who don't uh, who don't get enough speaking practice in the classroom. I want to show you one video. The second grader small group is rehearsing English with Elias Robot and teacher Nina. Elias Robot is a first of his kind, combining robotics and AI in learning languages. He never gets tired of pronouncing the same things. But Elias on opettaasis kieliä. Elias osaa puhua seitsemää kieltä. Eli kaikkia niitä kieliä, mitä myös Tampereella on kielitarjonnassa. Eli Tampereella voi opiskella ekaluokkalaisesta lähtien seitsemää eri kieltä. Ja sitten tietenkin voi leikkiä. Eliaksen kanssa voi tanssia, laulaa. Eli se on tosi monipuolinen apuopettaja ja hyödyllinen, koska lapset myös muistavat, mitä he ovat oppineet, kun he ovat So uh, that was uh, from uh, one of our pilot schools in, in uh, from Tampere, Finland. Nowadays they are using using robots in many schools in Tampere region. And uh, um, the pilot doesn't continue anymore, but we are still in the in the uh, very close contact with with them and uh, uh, co-developing together with teachers. Uh, Elias robot solution uh, is already used widely in in Finnish schools. We have uh, uh, Elias in in over 15 uh, cities at the moment in Finland, and in one city there can be several schools. And we have a quite large teacher community here. We are also collaborating intensively with universities in Finland. University of uh, Tampere conducted a field study in Finnish primary schools, and here are some results. According to that field study, uh, Elias robot increased the motivation to learn, made the learning atmosphere relaxed and focused, made children encourage each other and increased foreign language speaking in the classroom. This study was not about learning results, but uh, about what, uh, how teachers and students, how they are feeling when the robot appears in the classroom, what are their experiences and uh, also how a robot can uh, um, impact the motivation. Elias Robot has selected as, uh, as a best-in-class remote schooling solution after completing Impact EdTech Accelerator and also uh, we were lucky to, to uh, win a European Culture Forum award this year and uh, Elias has also uh, been chosen uh, as a product of the year in the Global Now Robot Conference and the national winner in U United Nations based World Summit Award in 2018. Uh, finally, uh, I would like to say that uh, to develop human robot interaction uh, for, for educational purposes, you need to understand human behavior. That is why uh, technology and engineering is not enough. Uh, uh, we need teachers, we need uh, social and, and human sciences, designers, linguistics to develop humanoid robots so they, they can uh, better understand and interact with people. Uh, in my opinion, humanoid robots, they provide a soft and uh, human-friendly approach to the technology and they can also encourage those people that are not so technology-oriented. For example, if we uh, want to make uh, girls more engaged in technology, robots can be a solution for that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joanna, for this presentation and for introducing us to what I would dare say is the cutest robot ever. Uh, I think all those Star Wars, uh, those Star Wars droids can just go to bed. Elias is here, and he's definitely the cutest. Um, now, 
we do have a few questions uh, with regards to Elias himself. Um, the way the robot works, do students need to follow any set dialogues or is it speech driven? Uh, yes, uh, in already uh, pre-made uh, lesson content, uh, students they select or our teacher sends them a lesson to, to study. Uh, there are two options and uh, they can start the lesson from the web application. So there is uh, always the web application is used together with the robot. It also uh, can be used as a standalone web application without the robot. So they select the lesson and then a uh, robot can give a lesson like uh, uh, about one topic. For example, if you want to learn how to buy ice cream, you can you can learn vocabulary and what to say when you are when you want want to buy ice cream. And then there is a, a free preform chat mode, where it's a kind of chatting uh, with with Alexa or Siri, kind of chatbot. So two options. Great, thank you. Um, and can teachers create their own content or their own lessons, or is it in the future of Elias Robot? No, it's it's already now, yes, and that's a very important feature. That helps to uh, localize, localize, localize because schools and uh, countries are different uh, and uh, curriculums are different, so it's very important that teachers, educators can create their own content. We have a lesson editor, teachers can create conversations, they can uh, add some uh, vocabulary exercises, they can uh, add videos from YouTube, learning pictures, quiz exercises, so they can uh, combine different kind of elements and make an interactive lesson that is uh, right away uh, uh, possible to, to use with the robot. Brilliant. And so I guess the, the following question comes next is it, it's very much focused on, on linguistics right now and learning languages. Are you considering or have you considered uh, branching out to other topics, other school topics? Like, I mean, if a robot wants to teach me uh, any kind of science, I think I might be a lot more focused on what the robot has to say. We have tried to keep the application quite neutral, so it's not uh, too much focused on language learning, so it could be also used for other other subjects. And um, teachers have already done something. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, uh, for example, some math exercises. Uh, also, there are uh, one one interesting in interesting experiment was, uh, um, how to say it, reading buddy. So uh, children, they can read aloud to the robot and robot is listening and, and reacting. And also it's possible for teachers to, to uh, put some text like a short story to the robot, add some uh, movements, animations, sound effects, and the robot will tell the story. And after that, will uh, ask some questions from the students. So that is, I think it's it's very, very uh, interesting and something we want to develop in the future. One thing we want to develop is uh, how Elias could help in, in learning communication skills. For example, uh, uh, how to uh, say no to the school bullies or, or uh, like uh, talking with, with uh, difficult things that it's, it's uh, difficult to, to uh, talk with, with other people. So Elias could help him in uh, improving social skills also. All right, cool. Actually, I sparked interest from Georgia, who's asking uh, whether or not Elias could be used as a negotiator in case of student conflicts. <laughs> Very interesting idea. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, that's fundamentally, that's... if it's yeah, going yeah. into communication. Yeah. Yeah, I think it could be robot could be a neutral, uh, neutral uh, like a, a, a diplomatic. Yeah, in that that role, very interesting. I think it might help adults too. Maybe we'll we'll solve global conflicts with Elias in the future. Um, <laughs> Wim from uh, Belgium has a question. Can you give a small demonstration? Can we hear Elias talk to us? Of course, yeah, yeah, just uh, wait a moment. I'm checking that it's uh, online.
Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? How's it going? Just fine. Thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. Um, can you dance? Oh. And a very nice. good dancer, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, re I remember him being very, very popular on the Graham Norton show where he did ganging style, uh, if I remember correctly. And uh, I think it amused a lot of people back then. I know it amused yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> the same, yeah, same robot model. That was uh, not not our project, but uh, of course Elias can also dance dance Gangnam style, and there are some some other dances as well. Well, yes. then, uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. mm. I think Elias will be used for uh, language and a lot of other things as well. Uh, let me just see now if we have. Do we have other questions from the audience? Any other interesting? Um, points to be raised for any of our presenters tonight? No, I think people are being a little bit shy. Well, think, oh, there we go. Someone's telling that everyone should have uh, one of those at least once per year and per class. Uh, I think it's it's going to make, I think if you have Elias in your, in your school, then you can become a very, very popular teacher indeed. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for the three of you for your excellent presentations uh, tonight. And thank you to everyone uh, who has attended this webinar. It's been my privilege to present our three speakers and finding out more about how to get students excited about STEM careers, how to get mathematics, robots and language into the classroom in new and inventive ways. Next week, uh, we'll have on Thursday the 18th, two new innovators uh, from the STEM Alliance program, Nodeblock and Kotokan. And um, we will be presenting again new ways to get students excited about their um, STEM careers in the future. My colleagues will be sharing the link to the registration form if you want to attend next week's webinar. In the meantime, Thank you very, very much to the three of you for uh, speaking with us tonight. And thank you to all the people who have attended the webinar. It's been a real pleasure to have you and to find out about your exciting ideas. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you very much from the Team Ivy UN, and we look forward to seeing you again. Have a great evening, everyone. <laughs>